It is 1 9 2015. We're going to take a look at uh, Acts chapter 8, and uh, we're going to look at two sections uh, 1 through 17 and 18 through 25. And 1 through 17 deals basically with uh, Philip's mission to Samaria, and then the follow up by Peter and John in 18 through 25. So we'll take a look at this first mission, the first scattering out of Jerusalem, and the first one to be mentioned is Philip and his ministry in Samaria. So if we take a look at uh, the early stages of the way that the church scattered, it always begins with persecution, and then uh, the mission follows. So there's persecution, the scattering, uh, and then toward specific missions. So in 1 through 3, we see that there was a uh, persecution of the church in Jerusalem, and it was uh, spearheaded by Saul. It was, uh, the term used is uh, diagmas, diagmas epi ecclesia, and it's like, uh, it describes a persecution like a hunting, as if a person was hunting down an anim hunting an animal to bring it down. And so it was a very fierce, a very aggressive persecution, spearheaded by Paul, and it resulted in the diaspero, or dias, diaspiro, or the dispersion uh, to the outlying areas. And the Greek word means to disperse like the throwing out of seed. And that's a pretty good metaphor to use because, uh, in a way, it is the persecution force, the scattering of the seed of the gospel to be spread through the outlying regions. And so this initial persecution was very fierce. It was led by Saul and uh, those that didn't flee, Saul made sure that they were thrown into prison, the ones that couldn't get out. But uh, in 4 through 8, we get a look at uh, Luke's first narrative of an, of an outgoing scattered mission. And he wants to take up uh, the mission of Philip in Samaria. And he says that uh, it comes up with a, another new term. We get to learn a whole new vo vocabulary. In the book of Acts, we're going to learn the, the new terms that came to birth along with the emergence of the church. Because with the emergence of the church came a new vocabulary also. And so this term that gets born is the preaching the word, preaching of the word, and the word used uh, by Luke here is euangelizo, for proclaiming the good news, and logos, which is translated word, but really means so much more than word. It's for it's all of the the logos is the creative trajectory of all of creation. The logos is the the guiding light of creation. It is the force of creation. So logos means much more than simply word. But preaching the word is euangelizo logos, <clears throat> proclaiming the good news of the logos. So this is a new concept that is born in the church. Luke uses it here. And uh, beginning in verse 6, he begins to tell us about Philip and Samaria. And he says that uh, Philip was very much empowered in the same way as Peter. He was very much empowered to perform signs and wonders. Another new term emerging here, the signs and wonders, that uh, Simeon, or Simeon uh, is extremely important in a Christianity as a primary category. The category, category of sign is very important. Remember, Christ called himself a sign of the kingdom. And uh, so the word uh, Simeon, or Simeon, is an extremely important category or concept for Christianity. And uh, we have this new vocabulary being born that uh, Luke is using here. But uh, he says Philip was very much empowered to perform uh, signs and wonders. He could perform healings. And uh, Luke uses the term therapuo, which is the healing as if by a, a physician. Luke was a physician. He would be very accustomed to this term therapuo, therapeutic, healing. And uh, he says that also... Philip was able to accomplish a purging out of the uh, mixed spirits in people. Akatharatas. The akatharatas 
these <clears throat> instead of saying that they were possessed by something, the Greek really means that uh, people with mixed spirits that needed to be purged out and and uh, cleaned or cleared out. This was done uh, by Philip also in a spiritual healing. And it resulted in a an overall atmosphere of grace and joy in Samaria, and uh, that is the word chara. And so Philip had a very, very successful ministry in uh, Samaria and was very much empowered with uh, the preaching of the word and the practice of signs and wonders and healings. Now, we get a look at the early church because Luke lets us realize that in the early first century church, Philip didn't have the power to convey the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit didn't automatically become conveyed, conveyed upon new converts, that there actually is a, the request for and the sending of a delegation from Jerusalem consisting of Peter and John. And Peter and, and John traveled to Samaria to uh, take up the follow-up work of uh, laying out of hands so that these new converts can receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> this is really strange to us that this would be a separate act, but uh, it is, in fact, in the first century, the early church uh, was very much a church that had uh, special persons endowed with special abilities that were very, very prevalent. Peter being, of course, the first, the, the, uh, the rock, the one who is really empowered to convey the Holy Spirit through a laying on of hands. So we get in verses uh, 9 through 17, we have a, that the, the converts were baptized while Philip was there. They were baptized in water. And uh, even uh, Simon, a, a practitioner of sorcery or magic, he was also converted. So uh, we see in this ministry in Philip, uh, and Samaria that Philip continued to perform many signs and wonder, uh, wonders. And Peter and John arrive, and they uh, practice the laying on of hands so that the uh, converts might lambano receive, lambano receive the Holy Spirit <clears throat> through the practice of uh, epitithemi to lay upon and establish the laying on of hands. So this is a very different situation for us to, to, to get our heads around, but it was a very separate ministry of a follow-up and spirit baptism that was a separate event and conveyed through very specific individuals, Peter and John being those two individuals. Uh, Peter and John usually travel together. They usually went to the temple together, and they did travel together to Samaria for the laying on of hands for the spirit baptism so that the new converts could receive the Holy Spirit. So it's a very different era, but it's a time when the dispensation of spiritual gifts was very pronounced and was very much uh, a revelation and a confirmation that the Holy Spirit is in charge here. The Holy Spirit is ruling this new kingdom. And so these gifts are very specific. These gifts are very pronounced. And they are very much particularly identified with specific individuals, Peter and John, especially with this gift of uh, the baptism of the Spirit. So the first mission that Luke describes for us is this mission of Philip to Samaria. And it was extremely successful. And uh, it included uh, signs and wonders and healings. And the conversion of this... Uh, sorcerer or magician that was practicing in Samaria and had a pretty strong following. We don't get much detail here. We don't know if it was a astrology or, you know, if it was some f form of a Babylonian cult. We don't really know. But uh, this individual was converted also. Now, in follow-up to this, we're going to take a look at uh, Peter's first, Peter and John's first mission work in Samaria. Very specifically, Luke is going to spell it out in 18 through 25. So we get a, an additional look at uh, some of the things that 
are taken up by Peter and John, and it can be broken down in that uh, concept of phronesis for the new mind that we are to put on as Christians. And the first uh, three elements of phronesis are observe, judge possibilities, and mark out goals. And that's what is outlined here in 18 to 25, the observing, the judging possibilities, and the marking out of goals of Peter and John when they arrive. Now, when they arrive, first they observe, Luke says they observe a false heart. And that is this Simon, the sorcerer or magician or whatever his specific following was. He uh, witnesses the laying on of hands and actually offers Peter money to purchase the gift of the laying on of hands. He wanted to purchase the uh, exousia, meaning the conferred power that had been, been conferred, on, conferred on them by God. He wanted that conferred power to be conferred on him, and he was willing to pay money for it. Peter responds uh, and says, May your money destroy you. Uh, apolo, apolia, or ruin or destroy your life. And, he's, and Peter recognizes in verse 21 a false heart at work here. And this is, uh, the Greek word is euthos, and it means not morally straight, a heart of a crooked thinking. So he perceives this person as maybe not truly converted, because he still sees a very uh, morally crooked heart, uh, false motivation. He doesn't see real conversion. So he uh, in 22 to 24, we hear Peter uh, tell this man, repent of your wickedness. And he uses a metanoeo. And we got to remember that metanoeo, Luke is very much in tune with Paul's philosophy of putting on the new mind. And metanoeo is repentance as think differently. There's There are other words for repentance, but this word for repentance means think differently with a new mind Think beyond this pettiness. So meta noeo. Meta noeo. Think differently. Take up a different mode of thinking beyond this uh, Sark's pettiness. He also says in 22, pray for forgiveness. And he uses a deomai, which means make an urgent appeal for something that you very desperately need. And that is the uh, forgiveness or the sending away of this transgression. So Peter says he sees a twofold condition that needs rectifying in this individual, and that is uh, this uh, bitterness of resentment, one, and a close identity with injustice, two. So you see uh, the literal Greek reading is bitterness of resentment and a close identity with injustice. And this is what Peter sees as the condition of this individual who confesses that he is converted. So this individual does ask for intercessory prayer from Peter. He says, please make an urgent appeal on my behalf to the Lord. He uses the word curios, Lord. And he asks for intercessory prayer because of this rebuke he's received from Peter. This is a serious rebuke from a very powerful individual, and he wants uh, Peter to please offer up intercessory prayer on his behalf. So we had the uh, observation of the false heart in an individual. Then we had the judging of possibilities as Peter determining that this individual needs to repent and take up a brand new Christ-like different thinking and get beyond this pettiness. And then Peter and John mark out goals before they return back to Jerusalem. And Luke says that they marked out three specific goals that they would uh, work in to their departure. And number one was uh, to thoroughly bear witness to Christ. And that's a dia martyrome. Oh, martyr, martyromai. Dia martyromai. So dia marturomai means uh, thoroughly bear witness, so witnessing. And then, uh, very important here, Luke says that they also proclaim, or laleo ton logos, 
which does not mean that they proclaim the good news, but instead they actually gave voice to the Logos. Laleo means they gave voice to the Logos. And so that's very different than a euangelizo because that's the third goal they set. And that, the third, third goal was that they, they marked out a plan to go to the outlying scattered smaller villages and to practice euangelizo, the actual proclamation of the good news. So this laleo of the Logos in Samaria was more like teaching. And the uh, euangelizo of proclamation and preaching was to the outlying villages, the smaller villages, before they would head back to Jerusalem. So Luke is making a distinction here between laleo and euangelizo. Laleo should be equated more with teaching, while euangelizo is more preaching or proclaiming. And Luke makes a very specific division there. And then, and of course, witnessing, the martyromai, the martyromai witnessing, the laleo teaching, and the euangelizo preaching. So we're getting a very definite vocabulary that evolves with the emergence of the church. And it comes about being launched by a persecution that creates this scattering. But in the midst of the scattering, you've got people like Peter and John who do observe conditions, judge possibilities that are available, and mark out very specific goals that they want to accomplish. That'll take us through uh, 825.